Siamo su Carnival Magic a Savona per la seconda volta e abbiamo l'onore di intervistare John Held, un blogger famosissimo ma è un senior director splendido, stupendo, amato da moltissime persone. Io non vedevo l'ora di incontrarlo, abbiamo parlato amabilmente prima, ci siamo già subito intesi e lo amo già alla follia. John. I love you, I have said. <laughs> <laughs> it took you all those words, say I love you. I love the word when uh, Senior Cruise Director, Splendido. Oh, all, oh, it's a pleasure to have you both here. Thank you for joining us on Carnival Magic. Veronica, Veronica, Veronica intervisterà John perché io non ho le capacità linguistiche necessarie per poterlo fare. I, I understood one word, linguini. That's like a pasta, no, right? No, non è pasta. Oh. E neanche gli occhi. Oh, gnocchi, ok. Ok, <laughs> occhi non sono gnocchi. Occhi, gnocchi, occhi, gnocchi, never mind. Good to see you. Ok, John, what I would like to ask, and that's just because I speak a little bit English better than Rosalba, that's why I'm interviewing you. She would love to be in my, uh, in my shoes now, but, you know, ok. The first question I would like to ask you is, you're the cruise director here on Carnival Magic, and uh, fun is everywhere, fun here is the word. How do you compare working here and making, creating entertainment for your guests compared to the previous trips where the entertainment was in your hands, in your staff hands, much more than in the features around the ship? Yeah, cr cruising has changed so much. When I was first a, a cruise director, the entertainment was one little small stage, uh, a few dancers, and, and now you come on here and you've got uh, a whole sports deck and these huge water slides and a rope course and a theater that seats 2,000 people and huge shows. So for me, things have changed a lot over the years, but the one thing I still enjoy more than anything else is still entertaining myself, still be able to go out and try and provide the fun. And, um, you know, here on the ship this week, we have 4,600 people, uh, 31 different countries are represented amongst the guests. And uh, whether they're uh, from uh, America or from England, whether they're wearing a, a beautiful suit in the evening or a, a red uh, shirt with no sleeves with a baseball cap and sunglasses on their head, like that guy over there, uh, we, are, uh, we, we, do, we have something for everybody here. And it's uh, a real joy to be the cruise director. So indeed, adding features, adding entertainment has not changed your work, has probably make it more... Uh, challenging? It, it has. Uh, I, when I first started the first ship I had a staff of 12. Here on board the ship uh, on this cruise I have a staff of 68. Uh, that's just musicians and entertainers and dancers. Uh, and I think the biggest challenge is the, the, the size of the ship. Uh, to meet every guest, to shake their hand. In the old days when I first started was easy. You know, I could do it uh, Uh, and, and the phones wouldn't ring when you're doing a television interview and you just can throw them away like that, which is one of the joys uh, of being a, a cruise director. If I'd been, done it properly, I would have thrown it off the atrium. But, uh, you know, you, 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 you have these huge ships now, and I think the biggest challenge for me is to try and meet all the guests, 4,000 people, very hard. Now we were talking about, just before the interview, about how full is the ship and how impossible is to manage with the economical crisis we are facing mm. and you said to me something really interesting about how is that possible nowadays 
Well, I think um, you know we're all very cautious. We're all watching the money. We're all watching the markets. We're all watching what's happening in the world. But the cruise industry as a whole, the whole cruise industry is thriving. And I, I think there are many reasons for that. But to me, one of the most important ones, if you ask people why they're here on this particular ship, for example, uh, they're here for uh, uh, two reasons. Destination cruising, the fact that they can go to all these beautiful Italian ports and then to Monaco, Monte Carlo, and down to Croatia. And they don't have to pack and then go to an airport and fly and then unpack and then pack again so that they've got all the destinations. Plus, at the end of the day, when they've been exploring all these great places, they can come home. They can come home to the ship and somebody's made the bed for them, somebody's cooked the meal for them, somebody has got everything ready for the next day for them. So there are two destinations. There are destinations as the ports and there are the destination of the ship itself. And, of course, the value for money for all of that is still exceptional. Value for money, that indeed. That was a good answer, wasn't it? That was a really good answer. Value for money. Uh, we will I get it. I, I should have just said value for money and stop, but I'm a cruise director, so we have to keep talking. <laughs> we will give it to Wall Street. Well, Wall Street. Give that one to Wall Street. If you're watching, Mr. Berlusconi and uh, Mr. Cameron, uh, that's our prime ministers. They're good friends. Uh, value. Come on a cruise. Come on a cruise. <laughs> Carnival Magic, in particular La Cucina del Capitano, which is an Italian restaurant a la carte on Carnival Magic, which is actually a real new on the, on the boat. Can I ask you, it is not a surprise that an Indian chef is responsible for an Italian restaurant, and that's not a surprise because uh, a few months ago there was a contest for pesto, the Italian pesto, and it was won by a chef in San Francisco, in California. So indeed, it is really international. Which is the most challenging work you had to do to prepare the menu for the Italian restaurant like La Cucina del Capitano? I mean, uh, first of all, for the question of uh, a chef to be an Italian doing the Italian cuisine is basically food is something which is inspired by everybody and everyone can cook any type of food what they wanted and it's all about their interest and uh, the menus basically before the menus were started we had a very good survey on uh, all the main deep grandmother's food etc and then we find out of their techniques how they do it then the menu was designed in that way and this menu came to perfection only after a lot of trials year long of experimenting and then we found out we came out with all these menus and which is successfully running now in carnival magic and this is the first ship which we started this italian cucina restaurant for the dinner and which is really successful at the moment and can i ask you of course you have been working on an italian menu but having in your mind that the clientele is from the United States, or generally not Italian, not European. Does that change anything in preparing an Italian menu? It's basically, it's a, if a guest is coming to eat Italian food, they wanted a taste of Italian. So it's basically, mostly it's a Italian trend. Like for example, some of them like the pasta al dante, some of them like it a little more cooked. Like for example, if a guest requests to cook a little more, then we do it. Otherwise, we try to serve them the authentic cuisine of Italian with a touch of same whatever they like it. And can I ask you, have you ever been in an Italian restaurant in Italy? Yes, I have been to eat outside in Italy for sure, yes, because uh, I worked in previous seasons in uh, Carnival Cruises. Like, uh, we first Carnival came to Europe in, in Carnival Liberty, which was here doing their uh, cruises uh, in European for almost three, four months. And then uh, we had Freedom coming in, and then we have Splendor cruising over here. We had, after that, Carnival Dream cruising for three voyages, and now it's magic. So I've been to restaurants here in Italy, and... Uh, Yes, <laughs> the answer is yes. Is it 
different, that much different from what you cook on board. Yes, exactly. Like for example, here on board, like Italian, like when I go to eat outside, for example, if you order for a Branzino, you just get Branzino. You don't get the side orders along with that. So it's basically in that way it is. But here is like the menu is designed in the way like like a course of every single thing you get it in your meal. So that's how it is. How many dishes you have to get ready every single day on the ship? It's basically we feed almost 4,600 guests and every single meal. Like for example, in the dinner time for the dining room, which is open, we have two different dining, and every single sitting we have two different sitting. Plus one sitting is whenever the guests walk. Once they can walk in, that is YTD lines, which. Uh, Per sitting, we serve somewhere around 2,000 to 2,200 main courses. Only the main course per sitting. That is somewhere around 4,000 to 4,500 main courses every single day we prepare for the dinner. Would you take us to the kitchen? Would you show us the place where you work? Yes, we will show. I mean, this is one of the places and we will show the main kitchen down. We will show. Thank you. In this area we divide, we basically have three different sections. One is appetizer section, the other one is main kitchen and pastry. Like for the main kitchen we have at least 36 people working over there with different shifts. Like night we have four people doing the basic meal, basic preparation and during the dinner time all together we have 36 of them. And you've studied work to have this position with Carnival Magic and the responsibility for how many years and where? I started uh, to work for Carnival from 2000 and now it's almost uh, more than 10 years which I'm working for Carnival. And I started to work as a cook and eventually I came the way up to Chef de Cuisine at the moment. And you studied in India? Yes, I did my culinary management in India. How is the school there? Three years of, uh, three years of study which I completed in India. How is working in a big shape like Carnival Magic compared to a huge hotel or a great resort like many in the United States or in uh, Las Vegas? Like uh, if it is a hotel, it's a different uh, way of work and different way. You're not getting like here, you feed every single day three times a meal with 4,600 guests. It's a large operation. So this way of operation, even in banquets and in India, will not be that much of numbers. Or banquets in any other country will not be that much number, which is challenging. But we are organized in the way so that it's comfortable for us. Which is the employee, which one is here and that you like the most? The one you trust the most? I mean, it's not like one you never trust anybody unless and until you get to perfection. So you have an eye on everything so that to be on top so that you don't live anywhere swing around. She's a fed down inside her head. She dines at noon, breakfast at 12. It's hard to know when you find her in bed. At night she's looking wide awake at all the things she wants to make. But halfway through the afternoon, she always falls asleep too soon. Her house is full of broken clouds, she keeps the bleak inside her book. You wonder how she can be so scream. Her diary is a few years old, it's empty and has many holes. She never keeps on making appointments, you wonder why she thinks she shouldn't. I want to ask her when. Wants to bet she can. She's upside down in her head. She's upside down in her head. Her close friends, none of them can understand. She used to have a nice boyfriend, the sort of boy you must be a young man who was very much in love. He asked her to go on a date He put a nice table for eight When she got in the restaurant He passed the night in her under gear I want to ask her when She wants to bet she can 